Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to briefly explain the difference between dynamic mode rigid bodies, kinematic mode, and static mode objects inside of Unity. So whether you're working in 2D or 3D, you're going to have a rigid body on the characters that you want to be able to move and interact with other objects within the game engine. So starting with the simplest of the three, a static rigid body is an object that is not going to move based on physics, but can serve as kind of a blocker or a wall that other dynamic or kinematic objects can still interact with in the sense that they will block movement and block physics. So static mode rigid body objects don't generally move. It could be thought of as a wall. So if you have anything in your game that you want to be a physics blocker, but isn't specifically on a tile map with a tile map collider, like over here, um, then it is likely going to be a static rigid body. Now, when you want a character that actually moves, you're going to use either dynamic mode or kinematic mode. So dynamic mode rigid bodies use forces, and then the physics engine is going to calculate the exact movement of that character based on all of the forces that are acting upon it. So that would include things like gravity. It could include when one object adds a force to another, or it could include when the script attached to your character directly adds a force to itself in order for it to move, such as walking. Now, a kinematic rigid body is going to be one where you basically need to calculate the speed of the character by yourself and then you move the position of that character based on however much you want it to move. So kinematic is where you're going to more or less calculate everything yourself. And then dynamic mode is where you don't calculate the exact speed of the character. The rigid body engine is going to do that itself, but rather you just add forces to objects in order to make them move. So let's go ahead and show a bit of the difference of how this can look in game. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Note that the rigid body for this game object, the slime, is currently set to dynamic mode. So let's go ahead and hit play. When we enter the game in dynamic mode, you can see that the gravity is automatically going to affect this dynamic mode rigid body. Now with the script of this character, I can hit left and right in order to add forces to this character. Now note another thing that as soon as I stop pressing the button, the character still moves because it still has forces acting on it. And the linear and angular drag haven't reduced the velocity of this character to zero. So with a kinematic character, I might just say that the movement speed is equal to the axis that it's pressing times a certain number. And then if I let go, it just stops immediately. But with a dynamic mode rigid body, there's still likely going to be lingering forces acting on the character until its speed eventually gets reduced to zero. And that would usually be based on linear and angular drag. Now, uh, note gravity scale also affects the character in dynamic mode rigid body. So a gravity scale of one just applies the normal gravity to this character. You can increase or decrease that if for some reason the character should have a non-standard gravity amount. Okay, now let's turn this off and go to kinematic rigid body mode. So just so you know, this movement is all being controlled by script. So you actually need to write a script in order to get your forces or movement to act on the character. But uh, depending on what mode you are in, how you're going to do that, how you're going to make the character move is a little different. And we'll show that in a minute. So let's hit play for kinematic rigid body. Now note that now the character is not automatically affected by gravity. If I press left and right, the way this character is moving is using the rigidbody.moveposition method. So when I press the move button, it's going to move a set amount. And when I let go, it's just going to stop immediately. So you don't have to necessarily make a character stop immediately in kinematic mode. You could keep track of a velocity and then add or remove to it depending on how long you press a key. But whatever kind of movement you're going for, you're going to need to calculate that yourself. You're not adding forces to the character. You're basically setting how much it should move manually. And the gravity is another thing you would need to manually add back in. And then the gravity is also another thing you would need to add back in yourself. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the simple code I have written here. So I'm getting a reference to the rigid body on the character. So just declare it up here. And then we use get component rigid body to get the rigid body component from the list of components. And when we have this, we can check whether the character is in rigid body 2D type kinematic or dynamic mode. And then depending on that, I'm going to be moving the character in a different way. So when you're in kinematic mode, you would typically use the rigid body 2D method move position. So this is going to take the current position of the character, in this case, the rigid body 2D's position, and then we're going to move it by a certain amount. So that's going to be determined by the move direction, the move direction being set by the input axis horizontal. So that would be your left and right keys. Um, generally to the right on the screen is a positive value of up to one. So we get that direction value of just presumably negative one or one. And then we multiply that by how much we want to move the character. So that's kind of a velocity speed of the character. Maybe this could be renamed something like move speed instead. That might make more sense. And then we multiply that by time dot delta time. The reason that we need time dot delta time here is that it is possible that the amount of time between frames is not consistent. So on frames that take longer, we should move the character. And then on frames that take less time, we should move the character less so that as the game keeps rendering to the screen, that our character should move a equal amount as time goes on. After you have a whole second of time and you go through X number of frames, it should still move the same amount than if you had half of the frames. So without time dot delta time, if you have inconsistent frame rates, you'll get inconsistent movements. And that's why we use that here. So right, this method is just literally taking the current position and changing the new position to be the old position plus a new amount and currently that's getting the input axis hormone and currently that's just going to be moving left or right based on the direction times how much it should move and as you can see here we don't have anything set for move direction y so if you wanted to have gravity on a kinematic character then in the move direction and your amount to move calculations you'd have to include some number for y that is different from zero. So for instance, you could do something like vector two up here, position change, and then let's declare a new vector. So we're going to get the x value, move direction times k velocity. And then we need a value here for y. So we could do physics 2D and put in dot gravity. And this gets the gravity value for the game engine. And this is actually a vector 2D as well. So we just need the Y value from that. And then we take all of this and multiply it by time dot delta time to make sure that the speed is consistent if our frame speeds are inconsistent. And then here we'll just do move direction dot X since we're only inputting the X value for this new vector. So we can take this and replace it with this bit here. So now this should include some amount of gravity. If we go back into the game and we go ahead and hit play, then this time our character should fall to the floor in uh, one way or another. So when we go into play mode now, we're going to have the gravity affect our character. But you'll notice that using the move position method on a uh, kinematic rigid body doesn't automatically calculate collisions for us like it would with a dynamic mode rigid body. So we would need to do our own calculations and then determine whether or not this character should be able to move to the new position, and if not, adjusting the movement as necessary. So you do kind of need to script a little bit more when you do kinematic mode rigid body. But if you want your game to have perfect control over exactly how your character can move at any given time, kind of like old school platformers, then kinematic mode may be the way to go rather than dynamic mode rigid bodies. So if we go back to dynamic mode rigid body here for a second and we take a look at the script, um, all that I was doing in order to make it move for a dynamic mode rigid body is simply to add the force of the move direction multiplied by our move force and time delta time. So while we hold uh, the move keys down, which are left and right, in this case, the horizontal axis, it's just going to be adding more and more force to that object, which can accumulate. 
Uh, you could think of this kind of like as an acceleration, but it does not currently have a cap on how fast it can go, aside from this linear drag and angular drag. But when we keep adding a force like this to the object from frame to frame, it's not exactly being capped here in exactly how fast it can go. Whereas with move position, we're moving it by a set amount every frame as things are written currently. So when we have it set up in the dynamic mode rigid body like this, even though the script is just adding some simple forces to the character based on our movement, we can still be pulling in gravity from elsewhere. And other characters or objects within the game may also be adding their own forces to this character at any given time as well in order to create the final movement that you would see with a dynamic mode rigid body. So once again, just with that add force method, um, we can see that the character gets affected by gravity. We can go left and right here. We can go left and right to move our character here. Notice that it's an accumulation of forces, uh, not just a set amount. And also the gravity here is an acceleration. You can of course do uh, acceleration with kinematic body and of course, if we hit play again and take a look at the gravity, uh, you can notice that this also accumulates across time until it gets to something of a terminal velocity. And you can, of course, simulate that with kinematic uh, rigid bodies as well. But you need to keep track of the old velocity, how much you're adding to it on each frame, and then having your own set values for the caps for how high the velocity should be able to go in terms of uh, falling gravity, and uh, probably for left-right movement as well. So hopefully in a nutshell that gives you a pretty good overview of the differences between static, kinematic, and dynamic mode rigid bodies, at least for 2D characters inside of Unity. So I hope all of you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I'll see you in my future video content.